All right, so this is a follow-up to the Backblaze hard drive stats of 2017. Now, I've seen some people say that they're BS, they shouldn't be used for decision-making, and I know this is just a factor in decision-making, but they, I think Backblaze really provides some detailed statistics. One, they give you all the data if you want to re-massage the numbers yourself, but let's dig into a couple things. I was linked to a video where someone says, oh, they're not using enterprise drives, therefore this comparison is very unfair and uh, to the drive manufacturers. And I'm like, no, they, you're right on some of them not being enterprise drives, so they're not being used the way they should be used. And if you use something not the way it should be used, it's definitely going to wear out more um, and not you know, last as long as manufacturers expect. So uh, that being said, I did some digging. So here's the charts, the Seagate drives, the HGSTs, uh, WC, WCs. And one of the things we kept uh, bashing on has been Seagate because of some of the high failure rates that were higher than the overall average. Matter of fact, Seagate's what's pulling up some of the overall averages on the failure rates on here. Now, an aggravation to me is that this is just a photo and I can't just click model numbers to do the research, but don't worry, I took care of that for you. I threw this all into a Google Drive uh, document so I can just link it to you. You can click on these and do some of your own reading, do some of your own research and learn more about the drives. Now, I highlighted these in orange because these are uh, the couple really bad failure rates and a perfect example of drives not suited for the use. These are standard desktop drives, like put them in your own computer, not put them in even a NAS, not put them in an enterprise environment with very high usage. So it is fair to assess that these drives uh, having premature failure makes sense. Uh, it's not, they're not suited for that level of use. And statistically, when you look at the number of drives they have, to see that only 1.65% of these drive failures, you're talking about thousands and thousands of hard drives to even come up with that number. Hard drive failures, I mean, they do happen often enough. We see them, I own a computer store, but in the big picture of things, I've rarely ever had a hard drive fail in all my years, one of mine. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's just a gamble, uh, always back up, but hard drive, this is why it's so hard to produce this kind of data on these systems, especially when you talk about like a desktop system, it would take to get this many desktop systems, spin it up and down when you're not actually using them, um, a long time to die because they're not being heavily taxed or heavily used. My computer's at home off most of the time unless I'm actually using it. The same with here. When I'm here, I'm using it. When I leave, I shut it down, suspend it, hard drive spin down so they don't see the near the usage and where you're going to see running in a data center. Now, these Seagates, like I said, they failed prematurely, but we jump up just to this one here. And granted, it's 29% because we don't have a lot of drives, but it is a Barracuda drive. And the one above it, which they have a lot more of, this M0 drive, they have 32,000 hard drives with almost 3 million uh, day count on here. So that's days of all these drives being using uh, in usage. They have all their statistics. I guess I'll link to Backblaze so you can see their formulas. But that's a really high failure rate for these drives. And I know Barracuda is kind of like, okay, I'll put them in my NAS or a little bit better. They're not enterprise. So let's jump up to the enterprise drives. Here's the Seagate 8 terabyte enterprise class drive. And I have, like I said, Amazon affiliate links for all these if you want to buy one. 1.2%. That's still a pretty low failure rate overall. Um, the drive, I put the prices of the drives here just so you can get an idea about how much they cost. That's going to vary with based on when you're looking at uh, this, this video. So this drive at 1.2%, that's a little higher, 0.9% pretty low, uh, 0.99, and then this one here is at 2.01%. But all these top ones here, these are Seagate Enterprise, I believe they're, yeah, these are the Enterprise uh, Helium drives. So maximum storage capacity for highest rack space efficiency, uh, blah, 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 lots of marketing stuff in here, but these are their, this is the, the king daddy of what they do. This is their premium helium product um, next to SSDs. This is their premium spinning product that they make for high capacity. And it has a high failure rate. Okay, not real high. I know you're, you're like, time, you're splitting hairs here. But when I look at these HGSTs, the, the first one here, I have the data sheet pulled up on. Let me get it here. This is the just standard Death Star hard drive. So the first one that's in this list is your Death Star 5K4000, uh, Hitachi D for Death Star, S for standard. 
not NAS, not anything. This is like a consumer buy it, put it in your uh, computer hard drive. I I have some prices in here, but the prices are based on their new NAS drive, which when you search the model number, it comes up. So I have a link in there to the NAS one. I know it's not the exact same drive, so I'm qualifying that right now. Um, but it is the standard cool spin desktop hard drive. Point. 3.2% failure, really low. I don't know what the price of the drive was. I, like I said, I couldn't find, I, I searched them and it was just really old dead links for this particular model number. Now the HM stood for Megascale hard drives. Let me read you what the Megascale says, uh, which is kind of weird. So this is the Megascale specifications. They have a data sheet on them. And where is it? Right here, Megascale. HP ships Megascale DC hard drives for low workloads. And the Megascale 4000Bs, are not for high workload. This is some of the other, you know, data statistics they have on these drives. So once again, non-enterprise level drive at 0.19% failure rate. And here's another one. It's a slightly varied model. Um, I don't I know exactly what the difference is. Actually, I'm, I didn't type the B in here. This is the B. One's an A, one's a B. So the B model has, make sure I get them right, 0.45%. Yes, there's the B, there's the A model. Um, I don't know exactly what the differences are in those. I, not that relevant to me. Uh, you can look for it if you want. But these drives, look at the count of drives they have. You cumulate to between all the Hitachi drives. You've got about 2 million drive days and um, let's see, about 22,000 hard drives. So plenty sample. You're not skewing it by only having a few drives that didn't fail, so it looks like they're doing great. That's why I skipped uh, some of them, like the Toshiba. They have 45 hard drives with only 4,000 days. None failed. Thank you. Good. That's good. But that's not the best statistic compared to a million drive days and you know 22,000 hard drives. But comparatively speaking, these HDSTs, super reliable. And then we come back to the Western Digitals. Now, I've always loved Western Digital for their warranties, but they're actually not quite as good as the Seagate. Now, I know these are just the red NAS drives. They're not their full-blown high-end enterprise drives. But still, um, that's that's a kind of a high failure rate in those. But oddly zero on this one here. So I thought that was kind of strange. The three terabytes apparently were rock solid, but the four terabyte and six terabyte. Now that's usually strange because when you double a terabyte, you're sometimes just doubling uh, the platter. So usually you might assume that this one and this one are built on the same, it's a guess, I don't know for sure, are on the same platform. But they do have a higher, uh, they have a failure rate versus this has no failure rates. And they have a decent, not a huge amount of drive. So that's also with the Western Digital. Take it with a grain of salt. They have 180 drives installed and only 45 of the other ones. So I, I'm not going to beat up too hard on Western Digital because of the low drive count. But the Seagates, we got some really high drive counts in there. You know, 7,000 and uh, here, 1,220 here. So 7,220 there. So really high drive counts on the Seagates, 180 drives and 45 drives on the Western Digital. Maybe not quite enough for a statistic, but uh, 437, we're getting up there with a pretty high one with this one here. So this is a little bit deeper look into those statistics. And they're not the only statistic maybe for buying a hard drive. I mean, price comes in as a factor. So, you know, how are they priced? Uh, are they affordable for the project? But you have to calculate it, especially as a business owner. I think about, all right, if I have to build a rave for a client and I have to warranty it and I have to deal with the client and any downtime that's related to that, I want to take in that consideration that if I pay a little bit more now and I know if it's the drive is, you know, $30 more a drive and I'm putting four drives in, okay, that's going to add up. There's $120 more, but what does it cost me to send a tech out there, rebuild it, go through the inconvenience of it and send that drive back, which means I usually have to get another drive and put it in there and wait for that one to come back and the the, the headache of it all. Um, it, when you're a home user, sure, you can you can use it to uh, shop price and go, okay, I want the cheapest one because this is what I have a budget for. Um, and then there's speed is going to be a factor. How fast are some of these drives? There's some variations in here. Some of these have 256 meg cache. Some of these have 64 meg cache. Um, but overall, I got to admit, I am really impressed with these HGST desk stars. Now, what I did link to with the Amazon here, and I'll click it for you, is... Uh, they, I, I searched the model number. These ones come up, these NAS ones, and maybe they're the replacement for it. They're a similar drive, and now they just sell them as a NAS drive. Makes me kind of wonder if they go, hey, these are so reliable. Let's put NAS on them. I don't know if that really happens. I'm completely speculating on that. Uh, but HGST, they've uh, really... 
they seem to have a good reputation. Uh, we actually are running four, eight of them now, uh, eight HSTs in our array, and I haven't had any problems with them. They've really held up well and uh, not given me any crap, so I haven't had any of them die on me. Well, we had the one time we ever had one die was uh, out of the box when it was shipped to us from the company, and it was broke on the side. And we put it in anyways because we want to see what happened, and it lasted a week, <laughs> and then it just crapped out. So that's the only HGST died and they sent me another one and we replaced it. We've never had a problem since. No bad sectors or anything. And uh, ours is you know pretty intensely used. It's my freelance box that runs my array, that runs my uh, Zen server and we dump client files back and forth to it for our retail store for backup. So they're in constant use. Not the same hard use you're going to get out of Backblaze but definitely in some pretty heavy use. But this is a deeper look at the entire Backblaze uh, drives and I figured why not link to them for you so you can do your own research and you know look at the model numbers and make some decisions on this uh, this is not the end all for everything but I want you know for people that kind of called me out on it you sure I think that was a fair assessment to say well if you're got to be comparing apples to apples um, and so I highlight these for they are absolutely high failure rate and they're completely not for use but then I look just below it going not for use but wow these things are made really well <laughs> so that's just my thoughts on this and uh, some of the hard drives but uh, if you're doing if you're here because of my free NAS videos and things like that, this is something when you're going to build a free NAS box, you have to make a lot of decisions um, on hard drives, and this helped influence my decisions to buy some HGSTs. I, I'm if I was going to build another array, it, it's still a toss-up. I like the Western Digital's. I built a few of them with those, and those are running fine without any problem. They've not been a headache um, at all. And we've built a handful on the Western Digital platform uh, with their purples. We've built a handful of surveillance systems with like four cameras and a WDC purple four terabyte simple drives and knock on wood. None of those have given us any trouble, but I, I don't, I'm not installing them at 29,000 drives at a time, so uh, I have to rely on anyone who can aggregate massive data. I wish Google would give us more data. Any of these data centers, uh, open it up a little bit. Be like the Backblaze guys. We, the more data we can get, the better picture we can get. I mean, share some knowledge, and uh, we, you know, especially with the manufacturers themselves. This has got to be helpful to manufacturers uh, to understand what's going on in these data centers. I don't know what level of interaction they have, but hopefully a lot, because we want like to see some improvements on that. So if you like to comment here, like and subscribe if this was helpful. Um, hopefully it was. Uh, let me know if I'm completely wrong and bonkers. So you just call me out on it. Feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, give a thumbs up on this video and like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, that's it for now. I'm going to get back to work. But uh, this was interesting. This was my deeper dive into it. And links will be to this document. Uh, it'll be public so you can click on everything and, you know, not have to look at the stupid JPEG. And by the way, Backblaze, if you watch this, can you not make that a JPEG? That would make my life easier. <laughs> Thanks.